Hey everybody, Monkey Wrench Mike. We are back with another video on my favorite pickup truck, the 1995 Ford F-150. I just don't know how to quit you. Yeah, I can't tell you how pleased I am at the response from all the viewers on this piece of crap truck. <laughs> it's been incredible. So many people have watched the video where we did a little cleaning on the interior. In fact, it was so popular, I decided we're gonna take it one step further. So I've done a little shopping. I have purchased some beautiful fabric. I have purchased some engine cleaner and I have purchased kind of a makeshift ground strap because we're going to address three issues in one video. Let's get to work. You really have to be kidding me, right? See all the little pistons? <laughs> I'm flooring a V12 engine. You thought this was going to be perfect, right? Why can't I, like, fall in love with a Lexus? Monkey. Monkey. Wrench. Wrench. Mike. Mike. Yay! I'm Let's in see. the car. Got my co-pilot right here once again. She knows the word. Word. She loves the truck. I don't know why. Every time I come at her, she jumps inside. She loves it in here. She's a work dog. Anyway, we have been to the fabric store. Thank you very much. And look what we have purchased in a very similar color. Okay, it's a little closer in person than it is on camera, but this is going to replace this. Take a look at that. Yeah, that's a hot mess right there. You are irreplaceable. This is getting replaced today. And look at the fading. Yeah, this has been around, hanging around. It's been cut up. And, ooh, I should probably have done that before I clean the seats. Anyway, we're going to take off all of the trim, replace the headliner. We are also going to spend a little time under the engine bay, under the engine bay, under the hood, cleaning the engine bay because I want to get this truck looking as good as possible. And I have read online that sometimes the grounding between uh, the engine and the vehicle itself can cause problems. So I have a nice thick wire and we're going to add an additional grounding strap to the engine. Are you ready, my pretty? Are you gonna lick? There you go, thank you. First thing I wanna do is clean up this mess right here. This is dirty, it is gross, it is oily, it is grimy. I have removed the battery. It might even be nice to paint the tray. But now that might be too much. That's going overboard. That's that's doing way too much work for the truck. But it could use a nice little cleaning. And yes, that's how I've been filling, filling the uh, transmission with fluid right there. But we're going to spend a little time, not a lot. I've got a couple of friends with me. That's a little intimidating. And a good sized little brush. And basically, I'm going to do this for like five or ten minutes. That's all I'm going to give it. And we are going to get this horribly dirty engine looking much better. And yeah, I will go ahead and put the dipstick back in. So I don't, I don't want any water getting down in my freshly filled fluid. All right, she got a little more wet than I wanted. That's okay. Wait a minute. The truck, it got a little more water than I wanted. Um, but that's okay, because we're not gonna start her for a couple of days. Yeah, we're just gonna let this all dry. I realized that was a lot of water. It wasn't high pressure or anything, and I didn't point it at any electrical connectors. I just wanted to get the top layer of grime off, and I think it looks better. She'll dry up, she'll look good and she's gonna be a happy camper. I do think she looks better. Yeah, I think that's a much much cleaner look for her, so that's good. This is just a quick little roundabout view. There is still so much dirt and grime. The car has, or the vehicle has, almost 300,000 miles on her. So yeah, dirt is to be expected. The new little distributor stands out, doesn't it? It looks good there in blue. Okay, so with this done, and I am gonna fix this piece right here, so it will stay in there. With this done, we are going to focus on the inside. We're gonna bring down the roof. Well, the headliner. Let's do that now. As far as the headliner goes, I believe this is the only tool that you need, which would be a first for me. This little piece is already broken, but there's basically just 
Phillips head screwdrivers holding everything in. Okay, we got two there. Continuing, continuing. There's one, there's one. Sun visors held in by screws, screws. Missing a screw right over there. And even the light is held in by screws. Okay, so we're just gonna get all of the screws done and we're gonna get this thing out of here because that's, that's, that's a mess. Here's a new angle for you. Yeah, super easy to do all of this stuff. I just have to remember that the long screws go in the trim that is above the windshield. All of the other screws are about this long right here and I'm just kind of throwing them on the dash. Just to keep everything in order, we don't want to put a screw through the top of the car. We don't want a long screw where a short screw once lived. And these are coming out so easily, see? So super easy. We'll get the rest of these out and then I'll show you what the car looks like without a headliner. Okay, are you ready to see what it looks like? Looks pretty good to me. You ready? Take a look. There she is. One headlinerless Ford pick em up truck. And Lola is over here begging me for attention. Okay, this was the easiest headliner I have ever removed. About 20 screws. Um, all of the metal, all of this is actually, except for the corner pieces, is metal. So right here, this piece is metal that goes across the back. This piece is plastic right here. Um, but it was super, super simple. And look how clean it is up there. That's gorgeous. Now I will kind of get behind there and do some cleaning and back behind here by these old speakers that don't even work anymore. So we'll get all of this cleaned. But all in all, this is super easy to do. In fact, I'll show you the headliner itself. It's very light and it, it's like it's on almost a cardboard. This is not very sturdy at all. So I don't want to bend it or anything, but basically all I have to do, and this is going to be the fun part, is peel all this off without breaking it. Now on a Mercedes, on the C-Class especially, you can get a wire brush because it's almost like a fiberglass, almost type of a blown glass uh, board that holds it up there. It's a pain to get out and you gotta completely strip it so the glue has something to adhere to. I'm hoping this is a little easier to get off. But we'll take this inside to my workshop, AKA breakfast table, and we'll get all of this off See, this is coming off kind of easy right here. And then we'll just, oh, okay, yeah, this is not gonna be a difficult thing at all to do. Here we go. Look at that. Yeah, it, it's been hanging down for a long, long time. Wow, so all I gotta worry about are these edges right here. Yeah, we'll get this all cleaned up, and then we get to spray some glue.
And here she is. Yeah, ow, that kind of hurt. Okay, we have the newly lined headliner, which I think is gonna be almost a perfect match. This thing came out so well. There was a little spot right up here that's gonna be hidden by the uh, sun visor. No big deal, there's no creases, there's no wrinkles. This spot right here, I've cut holes so we can pick, get all the screws through. Everything's gonna fit fine. As far as the process itself, getting that foam off was, woo, that was way more fun that it should have been. Okay, so basically I tried everything. Straight razor, scrapers, brushes. This is a dog hair brush that you use to get off of uh, upholstery and everything. This kind of worked, but then I had to go hardcore and I had to use a wire brush. Like you wanna sand the paint off of something or the finish off of something before you actually weld it when you wanna get down to bare metal. When you wanna get down to bare cardboard, you have to use that and it was messy stuff was everywhere in the air in my lungs in my nose all over my clothes all over the floor which made me realize that's probably why i'm still single yeah using the kitchen table not the best idea for that but i got the job done so we're going to get this installed we'll do another little time lapse so you guys can enjoy some music and then we'll show you the finished product basically i turn it upside down hold it up there put the screws in and all is well Okay, survey says a thousand times better. That is so much better. And I have the sun visors down because <laughs> that's what they look like up. I'll go to the junkyard maybe and see if I can find some that are in better condition. I don't have a sewing machine that can do anything for this. I don't know, maybe glue something. I don't know what I can do because these are pretty bad. But don't look at that. Look at the headliner. This made a huge difference. And the hardest part were the little screws right here. Yeah, the little screws. I have, I'm missing one screw. So we're gonna put in a temporary silver one and then I'll get a black one, wink, wink, and make sure that they all match. I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not, but I think this is huge. That and this and this and this have made this truck so much better, so much better. And yes, this works. Look at that, it works perfectly. I can't lock the doors because I don't have a key that works this, so that's gonna be fun. Uh, let me show you what else I did. As promised in the first part of the video, we have added a ground wire from here all the way back to part of the engine. This goes onto the alternator, and I think it's gonna help. I mean, it couldn't hurt. It really could not hurt, but voila. Oh, and this came off again. I've got a hose. Where's my hose? That, uh, Where'd it go? From here to here. I used to have a hose. Oh, it fell out. Ah, here we go. Yeah, this is factory. It just goes right here. Of course, the elbow is complete trash. So whatever vacuum is supposed to be there is not actually there, but it looks better. Now I can't touch anything because my hands are dirty. Okay. We've got that back together. So let's put in the battery and just see if this helps with the running condition of the truck. And then we're gonna call it quits. Yeah, this has been a good video. Engine looks better. It's not perfect, but it is much, much better. Battery attached. We are ready for ignition. Gotta move the tripod. I gotta get that car out on the road soon. But this is a much, much, much nicer place to be. So we'll just throw the screwdriver down there. Something else I still have to address is the column right there. Uh, I got to take the key out to put the column cover in, but that's okay. Are you ready? Hopefully she runs better. She certainly looks better and smells better. She does run better. Holy moly. She runs... 
Don't. Don't do that to me. Don't do it to me. Come on. Check engine light comes off and on. Brake is on. And this is flashing. I'm not doing that. <laughs> She's deciding to run herself. Yeah, this is great. Okay. Well, she's... Oh my gosh. There's a demon in here. Come on, girl. Rev for me one more time. Rev for me. Do it! Maybe that was just something wet. Yeah, maybe that was just something wet. One thing I do want to look for is my water, my oil light, okay? This works, but the oil pressure I need to check out. I need to see where that switch is and why it's not working. And this thing is just blinking. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, see? Four. What? Some people said this is how you read the codes. Why wouldn't it be your check engine light? Two, three. One, two, three, four. Come on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four. Three, four, three, four, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I have no idea. But the engine seems to have settled down right now. And the view above is gorgeous. She's beautiful. Let's get the right angle. Let's go up this time so you can take a look at the handiwork. That is a huge difference, everybody. Thanks to all the people who have tuned in to watch the series on my slut truck, which is going to get renamed. I have no idea. Um, she looks better. She sounds better. She runs better. But you still can't drive her too much because of the leaky front seal. So, I don't know. Semi seal. Terrible truck. Ton of trouble. The truck of trouble. I kind of like that. The truck of trouble. Yeah. Are we going to do another video on this? I don't know. I'm going to put the vehicle on Marketplace. I've had probably 10 viewers send me emails. Uh, I did give my email address in that live video that I did on Sunday saying that I was going to sell this thing and I've had about 10 people contact me. Um, I'm going to put it on Marketplace for a price and I'll send the link to that and then it's just going to be the highest bidder. Whoever sends me the most moolah will have this lovely truck of trouble. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching. We're back with another video very, very soon, everybody. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and leave a comment. I try to read them all. And if I can, if I have time, I'll add a little heart. And if it's a really great comment, then I will comment in reply. Okay. Have a good day. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.